Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the, the organizers for inviting me and let me give this talk to you. Uh, the work I'm going to talk about is called Single Particle Dispersion in Stable Stratified Turbulence. I'm Nicolas Suchowolski. My advisor is Pablo Menini. And this work was also done with Mark Rust. Okay, so um, single particle dispersion has a fundamental role in geophysical flows at least as it offers a unique insight into dispersion of pollutants and mixing of nutrients in the ocean and suspension of cloud droplets in the atmosphere. Uh, particle dispersion has received significant attention in uh, homogeneous isotropic turbulence uh, in the past years, but in stably stratified turbulence, it has only been studied recently and the work carried out is rather limited. Uh, stably stratified turbulence is different from homogeneous isotropic turbulence as the stratification suppresses the vertical dispersion, but its effects on um, the horizontal dispersion are less certain. And um, in recent years, measurements of tracers in the ocean and the atmosphere became available. So what I'm going to present to you are models for the parallel and perpendicular dispersion of single particle Lagrangian, Lagrangian single particles uh, under the Vucinesc incompressible uh, approximation. So these are the Vucinesc equations. Um, if we linearize these equations in the parallel direction, we the, the solutions are waves that oscillate in the parallel direction, and the frequency of these waves is the Brunt by Sala frequency, which is a measure of uh, how steep the density background profile is. Um, so from these equations, we have two relevant dimensionless parameters, the familiar Reynolds number, which in our simulations was around uh, 10,000, and the fruit number, which is another measure of the stratification. And typical values from our simulations are four times 10 to the negative two for n equals four, four n being the room by solar frequency, and two, two times 10 to the negative two for n equals eight. So a lower, a lower fruit means more stratification. So we, uh, we force our simulations, our, our flows, uh, with two different, very different mechanical forcings. In one set of simulations, we applied a Taylor Green forcing, which is a bidimensional forcing consisting in two counter-rotating eddies with a shear layer in between. This generates a coherent flow structure in the largest scales. Um, and this, this flow structure will be very important in the results I will show you in, in a few minutes. Uh, because in this uh, shear layer in between, there will be a development of winds, of net winds, that will carry particles with it. And um, in the rest of the box, will, there will be no net wind. In another set of simulations, we apply the random forcing. And in this, uh, in this set of simulations, winds will develop all along the box. And thus, we will have very different large scale properties in both sets of simulations. And so we perform four runs with 512 cube grid points, with n equals four and eight for both forcing methods. And for both, uh, for all simulations, we injected 100,000 Lagrangian particles. These are uh, fluid particles, and so at each point, their velocity is the same as the fluid. Okay, so in stratified turbulence, we, we have the development of layers in the, in the um, parallel planes parallel to the stratification. You see here, what you see here is the density fluctuations in a parallel plane of a stably stratified turbulence simulation. And here, some trajectories in the parallel plane, uh, or we can think of as the altitude of the particles. And what we see here is that the uh, dynamics is dominated by a wave-like motion, and that particles oscillate in layers which they do not leave. In consequence, there is, this, there is little dispersion in the vertical direction. And so here you see the Lagrangian energy parallel spectrum. And when we computed this, this is from our simulations, when we computed this, this uh, spectrum, we found that it was similar to the garrett mank uh, spectrum, which is a, an empirical spectrum for internal wave energy in the ocean. This is an Eulerian spectrum. But Lian took this spectrum and 
made it a Lagrangian. And we see here this, this line, this violet blue line here is the, the, ver the um, parallel spectrum. And so we see that it's flat for frequencies uh, shorter than the buoyancy frequency, the room by sala frequency. It has a peak near the near n, and then it goes fastly towards zero. And this is what we found in our Lagrangian spectrum. So here you see the energy containing the largest eddies. Here, the energy containing waves near the room by sala frequency, and then here, the uh, energy of the smallest, fastest eddies. And from the parallel trajectories and the Lagrangian spectrum, we proposed a model that uh, consists in a wave, linear wave superposition with random phases and the amplitude of the waves derived from the Lagrangian spectra. What is this? We, we, th we can think that the altitude of the particle consists of a sum of waves with, with um, random phases and the amplitude of the waves derived from the Lagrangian spectra. With this coefficient, with the exponent of the frequency here taken from the Lagrangian spectra. So there are no free parameters in this model. So here is the parallel signal particle dispersion. We see that it's ballistic at short times. It has a plateau for intermediate times. And then it grows slowly due to thermal diffusion. The, uh, the taylor green simulations show a deviation from, from this behavior due to uh, overturning. And our model correctly fits this uh, ballistic behavior and the plateau. And this is especially important for short times for the ballistic behavior because in stably stratified, stratified turbulence, it used to, fee, used to be modeled as uh, similar to homogeneous isotropic turbulence, but waves can, can show that behavior as well. Okay, our, our model does not take into account the, um, the thermal diffusion and the overturning, and thus it that does not uh, take into account that and cannot fit the, the longer times in the simulation. Another way to, to study these waves is by uh, computing the probabilistic density function of the waiting times. What is the waiting time? It's uh, the time it takes a particle to cross its mean altitude to two times, two consecutive times. And so we can think of the waiting time as half a wave period. And by computing the waiting times, it's, it's, another, it's another way of studying the, the periods or, or the frequencies. And we see here that the, the simulations are in blue and, and red, and the model is in green. And it, it's in good agreement with the, with the data. And another thing that we can take from this is that the PDF of the waiting time is, is not exponential, meaning that uh, the um, particles have memory, and thus waves carry information from their initial conditions for, for a, finite, a finite amount of time. Now that we saw that particles oscillate in layers that they do not leave, let's study uh, the dynamic of the perpendicular trajectories. So here you can see the density fluctuations in a perpendicular plane in a stably stratified turbulence. And here, the uh, trajectories, the perpendicular trajectories of uh, some particles in a Taylor Green simulation. And it, we can see that most of the particles are trapped inside eddies. And some of them are advected by the wind in the shear layer in between those two eddies I, I said I was talking before. And here, in it's, you see uh, perpendicular trajectories of particles in the um, random simulation. And we can see that particles are advected in different directions. This, the colors correspond to different heights. And so different layers have different wind directions. And so particles are advected in different directions. So we want to model the single particle perpendicular trajectories. And we know we have two components. Uh, we have trapping from the turbulent eddies and the drift caused by the wind. Uh, in principle, we can think of the trapping as similar to homogeneous isotropic turbulence, where it has been modeled as a continuous time random walk. And to this model, we add the, the drift. So let's start with the, 
continuous time random walk model. We can think of that for each step, a particle is trapped in an eddy with radius r for a time t with a certain velocity u. This gives a central angle of motion and thus a displacement delta r. And so the probability of a time t is uniform between zero and the Eulerian time. The probability of a given radius, it's, it's, it's this one is taken from the Kolmogorov theory of turbulence. The velocity, the probability of the velocity is taken from the Lagrangian velocity data, but can also be assumed to have a Rayleigh distribution. And well, this gives a central angle of motion theta and a delta a, a displacement like here. So the for each particle, its motion will be its, its its total displacement will be a sum over these trapping events, and to that we add a drift that we model as a bimodal Gaussian distribution to fit the observed Eulerian velocity, perpendicular velocity. So here we see the horizontal single particle dispersion for our runs, in black for the simulations, in red for the model. We see that the model is, uh, is in good agreement with, with the data. And um, the, the horizontal single particle dispersion is ballistic at short times for both for both sets of simulations, but, it, but then it shows a deviation. In the random simulations, uh, as the winds are more relevant and present all along the box and generates a coherent advection in for, for all particles, the ballistic behavior continues at all times. And uh, for the Taylor Green simulations, after the um, Lagrangian turnover time, which is the mean correlation time between single particles trajectories, it scales as t to the 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, which is still different from homogeneous isotropic turbulence that scales as 0 0.5. Uh, what seems to be happening here is that the competition between the, the, the eddies, the trapping, and the wind generates a scaling in between um, isotropic in, uh, homogeneous turbulence and uh, ballistic. Okay, so I, what I just show you is the mean, the mean value of the displacements. But to obtain more information, we would like to, to model the, the PDF, the probabilistic density function, of the single particle uh, dispersion. Th that is to say, what's the probability of having a particle at a distance r from its original location at a given time t? And so we did this for the model and the uh, simulations. We see here the simulations are the solid lines, and the model is the large lines. And there is a reasonable agreement between all curves. And um, we see that the, the PDFs are non rightly meaning that, meaning that we cannot simply model the, the dispersion as a continuous time random walk. Uh, we, we need the drift. Another thing that's important here is the, there are two uh, separate regimes. Before the Eulerian time, um, the, the trapping dominates the motion of the particles. And after the Lagrangian time, it's the drift that dominates the, the motion. And this gives very different PDFs for both sets of simulations, for the Taylor ring here and for the random here. OK, if we, this is for just uh, one time. It's, it's a snapshot of, of the particle dispersion. But if we take all the snapshots and put them together, uh, we, and we, we color the, um, the lines of equal probability, we get this, which are the isocontours of the probability density function of single particle dispersion. In red, uh, sorry, in blue we see the um, simulations, and in red the model here for the Taylor Green simulations, and here for the random, for one of the random simulations. We see that our model uh, is in good agreement for all times. Uh, and so this is not just the mean value, this is not just uh, the, well, the, the mean value, but it has all the moments of the PDF. And so the, the importance of the model is that with a model 
it like this, one can um, estimate the concentration of quantities uh, in a given flow without resorting to, to um, simulations to of, um, with difference in the initial concentrations, which are much, much more computationally expensive. And uh, we see here that in the, the random case, the wind sets a net displacement of the PDF, which our model correctly captures. And uh, so um, the, the main importance here is that, for example, if one has, one knows the, the large scale behavior of a flow uh, from, from a large scale simulation and uh, can assume the, the small scale turbulence to have a given distribution, let's say Riley for the, um, for the velocity fluctuations, then using a model such as ours, one can estimate the concentrations, the concentrations of, uh, of particles. So to sum up, the simulations and the perpendicular model show that horizontal dispersion is not universal as it depends on the forcing method. The parallel model shows that vertical dispersion at short times is explained by waves and, is, and it is fundamentally different from homogeneous isotropic turbulence. Both models have no free parameters. The perpendicular model takes as input the probabilistic density function of the Lagrangian velocities and of the Eulerian wind. And the parallel model takes as input the exponent of the Lagrangian parallel energy spectrum. And the horizontal model presented here could allow the probabilistic prediction of the concentration of quantities transported, transported by a flow. So that's it. Thank you. In which set of simulations? There are, yeah. So there are two sets of, two sets of simulations, to which have like different forcings. Uh, in the Taylor Green forcing, we have two rotating eddies, and uh, the the f the, um, the forcing goes down as we go to the center of the box, and when we say layer, it's not an exact layer. It's but it's the layer in the in the middle, and in the um, and how many layers are developed depends on the Brun Weissala frequency. Here, larger Brun Weissala frequency, you have more layers, more clear layers, where you can see the this tendency of the the particles. Uh, we did not try to compute the Osmiel, the Osmiel scale. I think we talked about that at the beginning of this work. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? If you computed the Osmiel scale, you could, you could estimate how, how far the particles move. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it comparable to the Osmiel scale? Uh, I think it was comparable. I don't have the numbers here. Uh, but I think the Osmiel scale was a little, was shorter. So it looks like a, you develop kind of, kind of a barrier, an infinite barrier, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly that. That's why you have uh, this behavior, the plateau. Right, but because of in, in, there's a turbulence, edge turbulence, it goes down a corresponding to the shear. Sorry? It will not survive external turbulence. This, oh, yeah. well, we are saying that right now how to break that. But it's, it's not up to the forcing, but to the anisotropy of the box. And forcing. And forcing yeah. mm -hmm. And also the, the forcing method. Well, you, you can see here that the Taylor green is it's not the same as the random forcing. But the random forcing uh, has uh, um, dissipates less energy. So there is more, much more energy accumulated in the largest scales here. And we see no, we see the, the, the plateau as well. 